Hello and welcome to our next video. Today our guest is Roly Armstrong. He is one of the group managing directors of ONL Next Century. As an expert of implementing and developing growth opportunities in the market of renewable energy, he tells us more about PPA contracting. Welcome, Roly. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you very much for having me here today. <laughs> it's great to have you here. So, what exactly is PPA contracting and how does it work? Wow, big question. <laughs> yeah. um, a PPA is the framework, it's the roadmap, it's the contract that regulates the sale and production of energy between an independent power producer, the generator, the renewable energy, energy generation side, and the off-taker, the industrial company, the grid that is buying the energy. Mm -hmm. um, the contract is the, yeah, the, the interdisciplinary culmination of technical know-how, commercial know-how, legal know-how, and so forth. And um, me, myself, being more a financial specialist, any questions today, I'm going to always answer that with the uh, financial hat on. So, yeah, that's the, the basis of a, a power purchase agreement. It is a, a contract that regulates the sale and delivery of energy on a, for renewable energies on a take or pay basis. And that's, that's quite critical to understand, um, much different than maybe a conventional turbine that can store and stop and mm -hmm. renewable energy cannot do that. Yes, mm -hmm, I understand. So why is this relevant for the energy transition? Yes, so um, you know, 20 years ago, renewable energy was not a bankable asset class. Yeah, it was not a reliable form of, of energy at an industrial scale at this point. And renewable energy required the state to step in worldwide and create subsidies to um, basically price energy, yeah, to give it a valuation that has enough returns for shareholders, uh, equity investors, to have enough bankability um, for lenders, mm -hmm. and to basically create a, a, an environment that allows renewable energy to, to become ubiquitous. Now let's move uh, 20 years forward today. Um, why is the power purchase agreement uh, important in this evolution? It has allowed renewables to, well, it is a, a, a product of renewables becoming tradable as a free market. Mm -hmm. uh, that means supply and demand can, can regulate the sale of electricity, the price of electricity, and the relevancy of the power purchase agreement is it is the step away from government subsidized energy pricing. And what value chain does it create? Yes, the value chain, right? We could, that, we could talk about that all day. Um, in our business, we have the vertical value chain, and our business is the IPP, Independent Power Producer Development. So our business starts with finding a piece of property, developing that piece of property, and once that property has then been developed, we've transfer, we, we, we transition a development into a special purpose vehicle, and that special purpose vehicle reaches a, 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 a bankable status, we go for what's called financial close. Uh, mm -hmm. Financial close for us is the first node of the value chain where we get paid, you know, meaning we as developers are able to, are, are, are able to pull out a, a development premium from the SPV that we developed and um, de-risk the project. The next node in that value chain for us is EPC contracting. The financed special purpose vehicle then hires our um, company at arm's length and we deliver and supply the SPV with, um, a, a, with the power plant that we've developed. And for that, we, are, um, we, are, we retain a node of the value chain. The next node of the value chain would be op, um, operating and maintenance. We, as, a server, as a service provider, we are, provide, we are ensuring the technical maintenance and operation um, of that power plant that we've delivered for which we are paid a service fee. And the last node of our value chain would then be asset management or collecting dividends out of the SPV. Mm -hmm. And that is the vertical value chain that, that we follow. And along that vertical value chain, there are many horizontal nodes that that, that 
are, 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 that we are, that are supplying value to us, that are providing value to us as an EPC, um, be it a, a panel producer that's supplying us panels, mm -hmm. or be it a software company that's allowing us to do our operating and maintenance um, more efficient, or a, a lawyer who is assisting us with the power purchase agreement that's external. And those are the nodes along the value chain that, that we as a developer are, are taking risk and paying other people in the value chain. Tell us three things that a good business model should have in this area. Yes. Um, like any good business model is dependent on its people, mm -hmm. its purpose, and ultimately its product. Yeah? Product being a piece of equipment or product being a service. Um, a friend of mine once told me a synonym, uh, an acronym called ETTA, E-T-T-E, mm -hmm. uh, that is empowerment, that is transformation, that is trust, and it is empathy. Uh, and if you can bring those, um, th those into your business model uh, and you have bright people that are aligned with the single purpose and have a product that's going to disrupt or add value, um, you are going to have a successful business model. So uh, which maybe international network do you need to get started there? Yeah, um, it, we always hear the saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah? And, and it's definitely true. Yeah? Um, that said, a good product and a good group of people and a smart group of, of, of entrepreneurs will develop their network as they go. Yeah? Today, we have LinkedIn and we have so many different avenues to find networks. Um, we have our universities and, and so forth. I, I don't want to say you need a network to start. Yeah? You can come up with a great idea. You can come up with something that's going to transform or disrupt the, the value chain that you're looking at. And if it really is transformative, if it really is disruptive, that network will find you. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't live in a, 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 a basement. You have to get out there. Um, but there are, you know, there, there, there are financing networks, banking networks, there's business networks, there's university networks. Mm -hmm. there, 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 networks are everywhere. It's like people say luck. Yeah? There, there, there are some people that believe in luck and there are some people that, that believe in, you know, I was, I was conscious enough to see the opportunity as it approached me and that was the luck I had. I, was, I, was, I, I, I remained conscious enough to grab hold of it. And that's like a network. Everybody has a network. Uh, whether it's a, 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 everyone has a network. You just have to keep your eyes open. So I would not, I would tell any entrepreneur that's starting a business model, don't be dissuaded because you think you don't yet have the network to place your product or your service. Yeah? You will find that network. Yeah. Oh, wow, inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> Could you maybe give us a contact information where the students may contact you? Yes, you can visit our website at uh, www.olnextcentury.com. Um, we are in LinkedIn. Um, you can obviously contact me directly um, if, if you would like. We are looking for, and we are always looking for, bright, um, energetic, uh, young um, employees, practical trainee um, program. We offer a, a, a very interesting practical training program. You uh -huh. yourself are aware yes. of this. <laughs> So please contact me, yes. Yeah, so thank you so much, Roly, for these information and totally interesting insights. Um, it was great to have you here and I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs>